Hey, did you ever play Guitar Hero? So you play this fake guitar with these fake fingerings that aren't real guitar fingerings. And it's uh, cool and you can play solos by all your favorite guitar heroes who are real, who play real guitars. And, and you know, play along and you get to know their solo so well, you know it actually better than they do, which is cool. Well, that's great. What kind of hero is it? What kind of hero do you want to be? There's, this word is around nowadays. It's uh, in a time when we're all feeling like, uh, whoa, we're in trouble. We might catch something. We might catch COVID. We might, might die of it. We need someone to rescue us. We, we go looking for heroes, right? That's what we do. It's we look for heroes, and the hero is the person who can save us. The hero is the person who does something great. The hero is the person who changes our lives and makes everything better. Got any heroes? This is The Takeout. I'm Jeremy. I'm pastor at communitychurchumc.org. I'm glad you're here. Thanks for coming. So let's think about this hero thing. Um... I'm a pastor, so I talk Bible stuff. Uh, Jesus uh, definitely counts as a hero. Uh, lots of people want to be like him. That's kind of exactly what it means to be a Christian, is to be someone who's trying to be like Jesus. Um, we don't all try the same way because we don't all imagine Jesus the same way. Uh, we focus on different parts of that, but sure, yeah. He's a hero, and we try to be like that. Be like Mike. Well, here, well, let's try to be like Jesus for a minute. Jesus had this uh, group of people who surrounded him, and he was their hero. He was the person they followed. He was the person they imitated. Have you ever had somebody in your life and you followed them and you imitated them? I had a guy, I was 14, I started going to youth group because my mom said, well, she observed that I was lost and clueless and I might do better if I would go there. There was a new youth group at church. It was the 70s and um, this was a thing people could do. So I went to the youth group at church and the guy in charge was named Phil and he became my hero. He became my mentor. He became the guy whom I respected most, looked up to the most. Actually, you know, all of the other leaders, and there were like, you know, 20 other volunteers who worked with him, it was his job. Um, they all looked up to Phil and thought of him as a hero for themselves. Um, and that's impressive. What's maybe more impressive is that out of that youth group, I think if I were to try hard, I could think of 20 people who went on and became, in one way or another, pastors, um, seminary teachers, um, church mission kind of leaders, uh, people who changed the world for other people, who changed more lives and changed more lives. And they were doing what Jesus did. Jesus took his group of 12 people who followed him around. I mean, about 12. We know there might, there's some overlap in names. We're not quite clear. We got them all right, but about 12. And he, he gave them a job. He said, go make disciples. And he said, wait, you're going to get power from heaven. And it's going to be the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit is going to help you, is going to lead you. And you will become my witnesses. That's in the book of Acts. It's in the New Testament. In the New Testament goes Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Those are the four Gospels. And then Acts. So it's the fifth book fifth book in the New Testament and in the first chapter Jesus is kind of saying goodbye. He's getting ready to sort of take off to heaven. He's already raised from the dead. He's been hanging out with the disciples now for um, you know four or five weeks, six weeks, seven weeks and and then he 
makes his exit. And before he does, he says, ah, power is going to come on you and you will be witnesses to me. You will tell people about me. Well, he did that to those. Just think about that. I mean, he's talking to them on some beach in, in northern Israel. And that becomes a movement that is the biggest religion in the world today. That's kind of amazing. I mean, I'm not saying that everyone who claims that the, the identity of Christian uh, is all, you know, they're all about following Jesus. But ultimately, that's what it's supposed to mean. That's what the word means. It means someone who's trying to follow Christ. So that's huge. It started with these few people, this, this little group of people. And they went out and got more people and got more people. So think about what's going on. Jesus is the hero. I mean, he's a hero by any definition because he can do miraculous things. He can heal people. He can raise the dead. He can you know, provide food for all these people. He can say things that are really smart and make everyone go, ooh. You know, he's that. He's everything, you know, most of us aren't. But he took ordinary people and transformed them. He didn't turn them into necessarily big miracle workers, though there are some stories about the disciples doing miracles. He, he really gave them a new identity. So if I'm going to be a hero, then I have to not only, I mean, I mean, if I really want to raise the bar here, then I need to not only um, be able to do great things. That's only kind of the first level. I really need to help other people get transformed, help other people turn into something that they're not. That's the kind of hero Jesus ultimately was. He was a hero who, who made other people heroes. And then the next level beyond that, you know, beyond the first level, well, I can do amazing things. I'm really cool. To I want to help you do amazing things, and you can be really cool. It's not about being cool, of course. It's about you can bring good into the world. You can transform the world. You can. And then the next level, the third level is amazing. It's turning other people into hero makers. Did you hear that? Turn, so Jesus turned the disciples into people who made other disciples. But he also took the disciples as apostles, as people who um, went out and made disciples. And he turned, and they turned other people into people who went out and made disciples. It's kind of like Phil, who did that for us. That. You know, not everybody from youth group ended up going and being a disciple maker. But I, Salim, Tim, oh, I did. Um, Rick, um, the list goes on and on and on and on. Um, you can multiply yourself. This is the heart of the matter. All the best things you are, you can multiply. You can not by just having kids, but by having spiritual kids, by by taking someone and you see potential in them and you say, let me walk with you and and help you uh, become the the full fledged hero maker that you can be. It's carrying on the same thing that Jesus did. It's carrying on that same amazing ability to multiply, uh, multiply good. So if a hero, first of all, is, is, is not just someone who can do impressive things, but someone who can change lives. You know, I mean, you can do impressive things if you can lift a lot of weight, if you can do great computer programming. But if you can, by doing those things, change someone's life, you've really gotten somewhere. 
I want to ask if you've done that. If you've helped to change someone's life. If you're a teacher, you've helped to change someone's life. If you are a teacher and you have helped other people become teachers and you've modeled for them and then you've helped them take it on themselves and take the next step and grow into becoming, then that's even more amazing. If you have, if you have helped that person then go and train other teachers and learn the spiritual meaning of multiplying ourselves. Now, now you are, you are doing the kind of thing Jesus was doing. You want to change the world? I want to change the world. I, f I find so much wrong with the world. It's, it's so disturbing. Every, there's so much wrong. There's so much injustice. There's so much lying. There's so much cheating. There's so much corruption. There's so much destruction. There's so much hate. How can I change it? I can't. I can't. I need to be one person at a time changing someone else's life and, and then encouraging that next person to go and change more lives. And encouraging them to make sure that those next lives change more lives. And that's how it multiplies. If we don't multiply, then we don't become heroes. We stop the amazing. We stop the good from flooding into the world. Let's not be the people who do that. Let's be the people who make a difference. Who make a difference way way bigger than ourselves, who don't look for any credit, who may probably don't get any credit. And yet, the people who make the difference are the people who keep passing it on, who keep passing on the good, who keep sharing the amazing. You can do it. You can do it. You can be a hero maker. And here, you didn't even believe you were a hero. I'm not talking to Captain America or an Iron Man. I'm talking a, a person who change, transforms lives, who changes lives. Can you be that? I bet you can. I bet you can. This is The Takeout. I'm Jeremy. I hope we'll see you again soon. God bless you.